This is an NBC News special report. Live from the Staples Center in Los Angeles, here is Brian Williams. And good day from Los Angeles. And so our coverage begins of this massive event, the memorial for Michael Jackson at the Staples Center just behind us here. It is estimated that before it's over, this will be viewed in part or in all by between 750 million to a billion people around the world. The crowd estimate in this part of Los Angeles is a bit tougher to define. Uh, something around a quarter of a million, according to police, say people have come to be a part of this event, though tickets have been severely limited. And to keep security in the crowd, about 3,500 LAPD officers. Uh, the uh, uh, casket of uh, Michael Jackson uh, arrived at this location within the past hour. And we're hearing reports from inside that all is pretty much ready to be underway. I'm joined here on our platform adjacent to the Staples Center uh, by my colleague, NBC's uh, Lester Holt. Lester, you get to put this in perspective as events go, events that you and I have watched uh, in our lifetime. It's hard because I look out here, Brian, and I, I look out and I see the Staples Center, I see the camera platforms, the people, and I think Grammys. Last time I was here several years ago covering the Grammys, it has the feel of one of those type events, an Academy Award. Uh, what's missing is the red carpet. Celebrities are coming in the back here because this is a memorial over the loss of someone, uh, but it is an event. And yes, there are mourners here, but there are people from around the world here who just want to be a part, they want a piece of this moment in history. Walking up here, I saw a guy speaking loudly away in French on a cell phone, dressed like Michael Jackson. Everywhere you look, it's the same. And uh, the concentric circles of security were formidable trying to get to this arena today, even those of us who have the requisite uh, blue uh, wristbands uh, that indicate you're allowed inside the perimeter. Many stops, many LAPD officers making sure all those who are in here uh, belong in here. Our own uh, Lee Cowan is inside the Staples Center. Lee, what activity do we have going on so far? Well, just a short while ago, uh, Brian, everyone was told to take their seats, that the service would be beginning momentarily. Uh, the mood we hear has really been driven in large part by the Michael Jackson music that's been playing. When it is a softer tempo song, the mood tends to be a little bit more quiet, and then when it's a song that's more upbeat, uh, people get to tend to get into it a little bit more. It definitely has more the feel of a concert at times than it does a memorial service. You might be able to see behind me there the stage where all of this will be taking pa place. Bathed in a blue light, there's a cascade of flowers down in front of the stage. Some musical instruments there as well, presumably the family members of Michael Jackson and close friends will be sitting in those front couple of rows there. A lot of talk about just how many people would be filling uh, this arena. Uh, we can see from our vantage point at least several pockets of, of empty seats. It's unclear whether some of those that will be filled by the family members and friends that are coming in behind the funeral procession or whether those uh, will remain empty. A good portion of those, as you know, Brian, were tickets that people had won without really thinking they might get it and uh, in the end didn't have the money or the wherewithal to actually come back and fly to get here in time for this memorial. Again, Brian, all of it expected to get underway here very shortly. We're expecting it to last about 90 minutes or so. We don't have an exact program. What we do have is a, is a tribute to Michael Jackson's life. In it are a bunch of uh, a whole host of various pictures throughout his life and messages from every member of the family and close friends saying what they will miss the most about Michael Jackson. Again, all of it getting underway here shortly. Brian, back to you. All right, Lee Cowan, who will be checking back in with Lester Holt uh, here with me. I'm, I'm reading from the list of celebrity participants. Kobe Bryant, Mariah Carey, uh, uh, Barry Gordy, Jennifer Hudson, uh, uh, Magic Johnson, Martin Luther King III, Lionel Richie, Smokey Robinson, uh, Brooke Shields, uh, Usher, Stevie Wonder. I'm quite sure there will be other names not on this list. And yet, Lester, I know uh, you've seen what I've seen over the past few days. Uh, some people are mystified. Some people are angered at the amount of news media coverage, the, the tonnage, the hours. 
already devoted to the death of Michael Jackson as an event in this country, and uh, the people are grappling with it. And you heard Congressman King, Long Island right. congressman in, in New York. Uh, who, video on YouTube got him in. A video uh, on YouTube who was very, very pointed in his uh, his criticism of Michael Jackson and, and, his, and his legal issues. And uh, he might have struck a nerve, I think, with a lot of Americans who were trying to process. I think we're all trying to process this because as much as we celebrate the music of Michael Jackson, and as much as those who are around him would only want us to concentrate on that, we can't ignore the other parts of his life, some which uh, uh, were very deeply troubling. And I think that makes this all the more difficult. I was, you asked me a moment ago to compare this event, and I was gonna, gonna go a place, and I'm gonna go there now, and, and I'll be careful how I say it. The last time I saw something that I think on this magnitude was, was covering uh, the arrival of a new pope at the Vatican. Now, Different stories. I'm just talking about the the, the, the media, the, the amount of attraction, the people, the, uh, the the helicopters in the air, just the that sense of all eyes on this piece of the world at one time. That's the closest thing I can recall to something on this scale. It's amazing. Part of it has to do with the explosion uh, of uh, media outlets. I don't know when I've seen more cameras lined up uh, at, at a single venue. We've been talking about crowd size, crowd control. NBC's Mike Taibbi is here uh, inside the complex with us, and he can uh, uh, tell us about some of those efforts so far this morning. Mike? Yeah, Brian, it's been amazing, actually, to watch the way the security in this perimeter has concentrated in this area. And the atmosphere that's resulted from all those cops, 3,500, you said, I heard 4,000, if you count the 500, right at the perimeter around the Staples, is a kind of a subdued, huge crowd with a feeling of a big event. Unlike anything I think you or Lester or I have ever covered in our many, many years doing this. Uh, and you have to think that... Uh, Actually, you think about this in terms of what happened in the previous four years since the end of Michael Jackson's criminal trial. But for those four years, he essentially has been a non-story in American newsrooms across the country on sites of uh, music downloads. Michael Jackson was a non-story. Even the announcement of his upcoming concert series a couple of months ago excited a couple of days' coverage, and that was it. And now I think you're seeing what happens when people rediscover the reasons they fell in love with Michael Jackson all those years ago. His music what he represented as a performer, the uniqueness uh, of, of his abilities as a performer. Before all of that happened, and everybody knows what that is, uh, Lester made reference to Representative Peter King, who went to Notre Dame Law School, so presumably knows about the presumption of innocence. Despite that, he, like many Americans, had a very negative opinion about Michael Jackson. Some of that opinion, much of that opinion, washed away on June 25th, the day it was discovered that Michael Jackson, an iconic legend, had died. Brian? Uh, yeah, and Mike, we've also been talking about how uh, a lot of different forms of media have been uh, featuring Michael Jackson over the uh, past few days since we initially learned of his death. Uh, safe to say he's on the cover of uh, uh, most of the magazines you see uh, at the newsstand, certainly Time and Newsweek. Uh, Time magazine put out a uh, special edition uh, 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 immediately following word of Michael Jackson's death. and. Mike Taibbi, you mentioned uh, something crucial about today. I was surprised coming into the, those concentric circles I mentioned earlier at how somber uh, this crowd was. It's, it is well managed, yes, there's the sheer LAPD tonnage to accomplish that, uh, but it is not uh, uh, boisterous. There's, there's none of that in the air. People are uh, moving, moving slowly, and moving for the most part very quietly. Yeah, it is, as Lester said, not unfettered celebration. You cannot ignore the rest of the Michael Jackson story. It's there. I'll tell you a story back from the trial. Back in the second week, a Harris poll was taken showing that three-fourths of Americans believe that Michael Jackson was what Representative Peter King said he was, a child molester. Uh, only 5% had a positive opinion about him, lower than O.J. Simpson, lower than Saddam Hussein. And one day we played one of his CDs in a parking lot on the speakers of our car, and within 30 seconds, dozens of people were around the car dancing and celebrating. It's that, uh, that duality of opinion that people have about Michael Jackson, this extraordinary, once-in-a-lifetime talent uh, who in so many ways in his public persona was admirable, was somebody who excited you to be alive and to be of the same human race as he was, and then this other part, which you don't really know about. Nobody knows the truth. I don't know the truth. You don't know the truth. Only a few people who are young men now, who are young boys when they made the allegations, know the real truth who Michael Jackson was. It's a duality in his personality, his persona, his legend, his legacy. That isn't going to be resolved today. And that makes this celebration a somewhat muted celebration. You're right, Brian.